While building any application, one of the important aspects to consider is validating the input. Model validation is all about validating the user input. In our today's session, we are going to see how ASP.NET Core MVC framework supports this feature. This is our ASP.NET Core MVC application. This is how it looks. If you want to go through previous videos, you can follow the link in the description. I will click on this tutorial tab. Here we have an option to add new tutorial. Now we can add tutorial name and description and we can submit to create new tutorial. In this case, name and description are the input that we are taking from the user. Whenever application receives any kind of input from the user, we should always make sure that it is valid and in compliance with business rules. Input validation is nothing but to make sure that the input is in compliance with business rules. Validation can be client-side validation or server-side validation. Client-side validation occurs at the client side. That means before posting data to the server, server-side validation occurs after data is received at the server. Before discussing how to implement these validations, let's address few of the questions that arise in our mind. First question is, is it possible to implement both types of validation? Then the answer is yes. It is possible to implement both client-side as well as server-side validations in our application. And moreover, that is the best approach to implement validation. Next, what are the benefits of client-side validation? Client-side validation occurs at the browser and before submitting data to the server. Thus, this avoids unnecessary round trip to the server. Thus, this saves time and resource. Now, some of you may be thinking, when validation is already done at the client side, why do we again need to validate data at the server side? Isn't it a waste of time? Then no. The reason is, client side validation is done by the browser by client side scripts. And if it is disabled for any reason, then validation may not occur. Even if you have validation done at the client side, to have better security, it is advised to have server side validation. I hope the things are clear. Now let's see how our ASP.NET Code MVC framework supports these features. We have a feature called Data Annotations, which helps us to define validation rules. I have discussed data annotations in detail in my previous video. I'll keep link in the description. Later you can have a look. In our example, we want to validate this tutorial form. Inside Views folder, we have createTutorial.cshtml. And here we have a form that handles this input. If you notice, at the top we are binding this tutorial model. To, thus, we can make use of this model to define validation rules. We are making use of data annotation attributes to define, to define validation rules. To use data annotations, we should import the namespace system.componentModel.dataAnnotations this namespace has so many built-in attributes that almost matches all of our cases. If you want, you can create custom attributes as well. Here I am defining validation rules. My model has two properties, name and description. I want my name to contain only characters, that means alphabets. I don't want any, uh, any other special character or number. So I'm using this regular expression attribute and I'm specifying regular expression. I'm, next, I'm using required attribute to make name field mandatory. I'm using this display attribute because I want name to be displayed as tutorial name. Again, here I'm using required and display attribute. Data annotation is not only used for model validation. It is also used for database modeling and many other purposes. I have discussed all of them in detail in my previous video. We have defined our validation rules using data annotation attributes. Now let's see how to implement server-side validation. In our example, we are using this create tutorial form to create new tutorial. Thus, this form carries our data. We all know that in MVC framework, controller action method handles our request. Now we have to find out which controller action method handles this form because that's going to be the place where we are going to implement server-side validation. I have opened createTutorial.cshtml. Here we have a form. If you look at these tag helpers, ASP controller and ASP action, we can understand that tutorial is the controller and create tutorial is the action method inside that controller which handles this form. Here we have controllers folder. Inside this controllers folder, we have tutorial controller. 
Now we need to find out create tutorial action method. Here I have create tutorial action method. Here we have two action methods with the same name. One with HTTP get attribute and other one is HTTP post attribute. Always remember action method with HTTP post attribute handles form post. This create tutorial action method takes a parameter which is of the type tutorial and our input data is mapped to this model which is done by model binding system and concept is called as model binding. If you want to go through model binding concept, I have a dedicated video. You will find that video inside ASP.NET Core MEC playlist. Validating input is very simple. If you notice here I have if condition inside which I am checking whether the mo whether model state is valid or not. Again, model state is framework provided feature which stores all the validation errors and model binding errors. If you want, you can write your custom logic to validate data. But in most of the simple cases, this much will be sufficient. We have seen how to define validation rules using data annotations and how to validate at the controller using model state. One more important part of validation is displaying error messages to the user. I will open create tutorial view. To display validation errors, we make use of validation tag helpers. Can you see ASP validation for uh, whose value specified as name? This is validation tag helper. And here we have used span tag to display error messages. This is bound to name property of tutorial model. All the errors related to name property will be displayed here. Same way we are using one more validation tag helper for description property. Defy that. Here we have create tutorial form. I will not fill anything. I will submit. See, control has reached this create tutorial action method and look at the value of model state. It is not valid. This means there are validation errors. So it's going to return back to the view. It is not going to continue further. I will continue. All the validation errors are displayed. This is server side validation. We validate the form when the form is submitted to the server. Let's move further and understand how to implement client side validation. Client side validation involves two important steps. First step is to install jQuery libraries. Second step is to load these script files on the necessary view page. To implement client side validation, we make use of jQuery validation libraries. If you create your application using ASP.NET Core web application template, then framework itself will do all the necessary setup for you. First step is to install necessary libraries. Here you have www root folder, inside which you have lib folder. Here you can find jQuery validation folder and jQuery validation unobtrusive. If I expand, you can find the necessary JavaScript files. Then we should call these scripts in our view file. Please remember, I have used ASP.NET web app template to create this project. That's why I have all these files installed. If you have used empty project template, if you have www root folder, right click on that folder, then here you will find an option add client side library search for jquery and install i'm not going to install because already it is installed in my project same way you can search for jquery validation and jquery validation unobtrusive you can install these files we have installed the necessary files until we load these files client side validation will not occur let's verify that this is our form I'll place breakpoint here. This is create tutorial action method. This action method is going to get called when we post the form. I'll not fill anything and submit. Ideally, before this form is submitted to the server, client side validation should occur. I'll submit. See, as soon as I submit, without validating, the control has reached the server. That means form is submitted. It means client side validation did not occur. Uh, now we are getting these error messages. This means these error messages are because of the server side validation. To make client side validation happen, we should load script files wherever necessary. Inside views folder, we have shared folder inside which we have validation scripts partial.cshtml file. Here framework has included these script files. Now you can refer to this file wherever necessary. Let's say I want to validate form while creating tutorial. I can include that script here in this create tutorial.cshtml using script section. 
let's verify that here I have create tutorial and here I have a breakpoint this time if I submit without entering any value it should not hit that breakpoint instead it should give me error message thus we can make sure that client side validation has occurred I'll submit this time we have error message form is not submitted to the server client side validation has occurred and we have error message displayed the moment I enter something error has gone I'll submit now it has reached create tutorial server side validation will occur if everything is fine then the record will be created after client side validation and server side validation are successful our record has been created one more place where you can include these script files is layout file if you want validation to happen on several files instead of calling script on every single file you can include those scripts in layout file then validation will apply to all the pages you can include like this and you can remove from here this time I'll enter numeric value as soon as, as, soon as I type numeric value I'm getting error please enter text this is client side validation thus based on your requirement you can decide the place to include these files very important thing to know about client-side validations is when we include these files in our application the same validation rules that we have defined using data annotations are used to validate at client-side but we need not write any different rule for validating at the client-side the same rules are used i hope you are clear with server-side and client-side validation thanks for your time and support see you soon in the next video